Hi everyone, I'm back, season two. I'm so excited. Welcome, citizen sister listeners. We are here with so much excitement. I'm here in studio with Dennis O'Rourke, my engineer and editor and partner in crime. Hello. <laughs> we are thrilled to announce season two. And we're kicking it off with this huge announcement that I promised to give to you all today. And that announcement is, yes, we did it. We are the number one podcast in my city on the island, Bainbridge Island. We won. Woohoo. Best of Bainbridge. Best of Bainbridge. Yeah. (laughs) And now we're up for Best of Kitsap County. That is super exciting. I can't tell you how good that feels when I'm so brand new to this, Dennis, <laughs> I feel like crying. I, I've i known for a little while, but I wasn't allowed to announce it. I thank all of you listeners and all of the people who voted and have helped me stay on this podcast map. And it is like we are the little engine that could and we just <laughs> keep on trucking. And I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. Um, there's just just getting that is like a little boost to me to say keep going and <laughs> I love it and I'm I'm just really really happy and so we wanted to do something really special for our first episode of season 2 I told all of you that I interviewed um, friends in Austria and people and I wanted to start it off with somebody that I have known for years and years and years and years and years. Like I don't even know how many years (laughs) we really do literally call John Florencio the fourth re-sister. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm interviewing one of my, I mean, brother from another mother, just like David, except sister. (laughs) Um, John Florencio and I have performed all over the world together, Indonesia, Malaysia, Carnegie Hall in New York City, um, San Francisco. Uh, He helped me launch my one-woman show um, way, way back when I first did it. Um, Gosh, all over California, Texas, Canada. I mean, we have obviously Austria and Germany um, and Paris, so many, so many memories. Um, We have been through a lot together and I'm excited because it brings me back to that idea that I had of interviewing somebody that you already know and all the things you discover about friends that you've known for years, and I've known him for years, and yet I still discovered something brand new about my dear friend, John Florencio. He is an extraordinary pianist, and yes, you will get to hear some beautiful music and um, and lots of humor, too. And there is a video, so I'm sure you've already checked out the Chad episode on our YouTube channel. This is our second episode that has an interview, so I'm very excited for you to see it. It was filmed in Filtzmus, Austria, in the mountains at um, our hotel there. And yeah, and we'll have some music shared throughout the next the whole next season, music will have a little bit more of a through line. So that's really exciting. <laughs> and I can't wait for you to hear it. But thank you again. We are going to have a party. And you will get to hear some of that party um, in our celebration for Citizen Sister winning the number one podcast. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, and yeah, so stay tuned for that. Um, And for more announcements and more exciting things to come, I hope you enjoy this interview. Write me, call me. Uh, We're going to post a a new phone number soon. But if you can't call me, that's okay. You can just (laughs) send me a a, um, message on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. And God bless. Enjoy. One last message that I wanted to say before we launch into the John Florencio, the extraordinary John Florencio episode, is that there is a reason, and I forgot to say it in the intro, there is a reason that we chose Mr. John Florencio as the kickoff for season two, this very, very special kickoff 
episode was chosen because John Florencio is a Filipino American just like me, and it is Filipino American History Month, October. Yes, my friends, October is Filipino American History Month. If you didn't know that, you know that now, and if you did know that, you're celebrating with me. And so we are kicking off um, season two with John Florencio, my fellow Filipino American, um, with Bicolano roots just like me, and yes, you might hear a little bit of that music in this episode. So enjoy, and thank you again, Sister John, for doing this. So much fun. Enjoy, everyone. Thanks again. Hi, I'm Stephanie Reese. I'm a singer and an actress, and my career has taken me all over the world. And in my global travels, I discovered I loved a lot more than just being on stage and performing. I loved having conversations with people from all walks of life, different cultures, beliefs, different talents and backgrounds, and every time I found what was extraordinary in each and every person I took the time to speak with. From rock star celebrities, Broadway stars, soul singers, politicians, and everyday people like you and me, I'm bringing that to you here on Citizen Sister, where we have the conversations that help us all see how we are connected in the extraordinary and ordinary things in our lives and how that makes us all citizens of the world. This is Citizen Sister. Hello, Citizen Sister listeners and viewers. So excited to be here. I can't even tell you. I know you've all been waiting for it. I have with me right here in the flesh, the fourth three sister, Mr. John Florencio. Does that mean the oldest will technically hide? Citizen sister. Hey, 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 hey. So where are we, Johnny? Okay, we are in Austria, close to Salzburg, in a ski station called Fieldsmoose. Ski um, city, It's yeah. a ski town. Um, and a hiking town in the and summer. And a hiking town. We love hiking. Oh, my God. Mountain. Yes, we do. I mean, We've been up and down here. that mountain so I mean, much. they say that there's like an energy vortex in the mountain, and I think you and I experienced that at one time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so we're in beautiful Austria, and... We love it here, as you said. How many years? Uh, 13 years 13 we've been years. coming here. And the reason we come we're here... Old. I know. Well, we were only 20, what, when we were last year? No, just Some kidding. <laughs> we, um, <laughs> so we, no, the interesting thing about this is that we come here because we're part of this UNICEF family. And Harry Burt Klein, who I will also interview today, um, incidentally, or we will, we're co-hosting as well today, um, is uh, he brings some of the artists that we have for in our winter show for right. UNICEF Germany mm-hmm. um, to this little town to give a stellar kind of just crazy level out of this world concert for this tiny 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 I little town. I don't even have words. I don't either. I mean, it is a tiny town. Um, can, can you imagine like the impact it has? On their little village. I don't even think they realize, because do you think, I mean, honestly, in your career, and we're going to talk about what, first of all, John is a piano virtuoso, and I do not say that lightly. I say that for Well, no, no, stop. No, 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 no. Okay, wait, 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 finish your thought. (laughs) My thought. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Sorry, we have too many inside jokes and funnies. But the reality is that very few people on this earth if anyone at all that I personally know can play piano like this man in front of me. And I really okay, mean that for my see, soul. No, no, I really guys, mean it. I really mean it. And because we're sisters. Also, and we're sisters. So you're I can go there. No, no, but no, 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 I, no, no. I'd no. say not I don't in the world. I mean. No, in the world that I have That actually, you've worked with. Well, yes. Okay. But no, I'll, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I really. It's not as if, I know I'm gushing now and I'm getting sidetracked from the yeah, whole story, UNICEF sorry. story, but but I, but I, more about you. <laughs> um, but this is your interview. This is the extraordinary John Florencio. This is what this interview is. And we celebrate people here on Citizen Sister who, I mean, basically the, the whole premise of this podcast was that did I collect spoons on my trip or portraits or art no i col- on all the trips around the world no i well, collected people i collected people though most of all and relationships and and the funny thing about that is john the christmas markets 
okay, I collected ornaments. That's fair. Let's be honest. But, okay, yeah, so people, however, uh, it's you were with me on those journeys, so I didn't have to collect John. John and I both collected people together, oh actually, didn't we? I mean, we met people from all walks of life. We're old. Um, we are old. <laughs> but we have toured the world together, um, quite oh, literally. Oh, my God, wait. So you want to... Okay, let's from, go from through our tours. Malaysia. Well, no, let's to start Mal- from the beginning. Okay. We met in San Francisco at a piano bar. Right. Um, Octavia Lounge. No, my Yeah, no, no, no. I met you at Octavia. Okay, Octavia Oscar, Lounge. Oscar Peñaranda, uh, friend to the show peeps. who I also interviewed. Hey, Bay Area peeps. What's up? Um, Oscar, I, Oscar's Oscar been on Peñaranda. the, yeah, he's yeah. been on the pod and his sister, Frances, introduced us. Right. And you were going through a lot at the time and you were like, Sure, I'll play for you. Jaded. Like, so jaded. Rock. You were way more jaded but then I was than you were now. I am now. Interesting. It's, no? It, yeah. Well, why is that, you think? Um, I think that you found. Ex- yeah. I think, I think, well. It was life's journey at that time. We've been through jaded moments in our in our life. You wear jaded well. I have to tell you that it becomes part That's of the his, New York. Yeah, yeah I, the, <laughs> I can't get rid of it. I'm sorry. So I just want to backtrack though because I'm jumping all over in like ADD That's style. Okay. So I want to you know give you a proper interview and not just inside jokes and our memories. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and start at the beginning a little bit so they really understand who you are. Yes, we met there. The fascinating thing in my gush about John Florencio is that. Um, Yes, I have I have performed with people all over the world, as has he. Um, but what is very different about his talent specifically is his knowledge of repertoire, absolutely, and his ability to play repertoire from all genres, know them in his brain with zero music and chord sheets, all of that. Yeah, sure, he can use those. He can read music beautifully. He play, But it's being able to play the cl- classical music to the degree that you play it with and turn around and do rock and roll and musical theater like you were born to do it as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. And Thank so that, that's the repertoire part. But right. that does not speak on the part that makes me feel verklempt. It is... I, I cry a little bit and let me go there. Please like, let like me go I there. Didn't know. I know. I, I am not <laughs> weepy either. Oh, I know. Right? But I'm weeping. I am <laughs> weepy. And I'm just going to say to have a pianist who breathes with you as an artist who understands the soul of the music. And I wish it was just that our, it was our, just our chemistry, which we do have. But I've seen you do that with everybody you play for and you change that breath according to the artist Mm -hmm. and that in and of itself is a talent that um i mean we'll go there in a moment but i i can't understand or uh, if fully because it's not my gift to accompany but where that comes from and and understanding especially because i don't you don't like you don't you're not a singer i mean you can sing but you're not a singer and i have noticed that there are pianists who are singers so they understand that Mm -hmm. but it is a separate thing to be an accompanist and to feel the nuance of the artist and the music so let's go there for a moment let's Mm -hmm. take let's go back to your beginnings where well, were you born? Okay, I was I mean, really born bad. in the Philippines, in Manila. And I started my early music education at yeah. the University of Santo Tomas Conservatory of Music, which I started when I was 14. Now, do you like, have to, prepper. like, audition to go to these schools? Or how does... I don't know the... Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I wanted to study with this famous teacher. Ah, in the Philippines, and I kind of strong armed my way because I was, you know, I was a kid, yeah. and I was like so arrogant, and <laughs> like I'm like I want to study with the best teacher. So okay, so fast forward, San Francisco Conservatory of Music. You know, we immigrated to the United States in the West Coast. Um, I got accepted to the San Francisco Conservatory of Music, which was a little more competitive. So I did all my classical stuff there. I mean, I'm talking eight to 11 hours a day. 
oh my God. on the piano. And that you know, being discipline. a young person, you know, like I started young in the business. But like when I started studying classical music, the more I got serious and the more I got basically educated on how to play. So fast forward again. <clears throat> no, sorry. Same time period while I was at the conservatory. At Santa Teresa. I have a... Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. At the San Francisco Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. But back to how did you end up at San Francisco Conservatory from being in the Philippines? You know, like that's a... Well, it was a time when you had to choose your citizenship because my dad's American. Oh, right. Okay. So 17, I came to the States and then auditioned. Yeah, auditioned that same year. My my high school, I, you know, I auditioned. It was very competitive and I was very happy. So what do you mean? Like, well, how? I just, I guess, well, I didn't that actually realize that that was... That was the time that, that, that when was, we were moving okay, to moving. the States. Yeah. And I mean, that's like no small thing. Like, and I understand that more now that I have spent time in the Philippines as an adult. But looking at that and knowing that you come so solidly from one culture to to go to the States... And I know from being in the Philippines, like, the U.S. is this thing. Mm -hmm. But to have the guts... And the, and the self-confidence um, to say, oh, yeah, I'm an audition for San Francisco Conservatory. Right, I, I know. Because culturally... Yeah, you're like, oh, it's, but it's the States. Wait, what? Right. You know? But then again, you know, I was a you're very determined, <laughs> <laughs> determined young man. You know, I wasn't the... You weren't the, a wallflower about your talent. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's always been out there. So, you know, in a very short period of time that I lived in the Philippines, I developed these connections. And that's where the accompanying started because oh. I started, you know, classical, but I also have the gift of improvisation. Your ear. Uh, my ear. <clears throat> my ear was trained very well. Excuse me. Um... And then I learned how to transpose. So the transposition That's part, huge. you know, you play for friends and they're like, oh, it's too high. I'm like, oh, no problem. I can take it down. So it was something that was He natural. spoiled me with that, by the way, because as a singer, working with him as my first time leaving musical theater and then doing my own stuff mm -hmm. and having John as my first real, like, partnership accompanist, I just thought most accompanists could do that. I was very wrong. <laughs> I was you know, very wrong. strange you say that because I thought that was natural too. You did as well. Yeah, until I, uh, you know, I took keyboard harmony. Yeah. Or, or, or my musicianship classes. I'm like, oh my gosh, not everyone can transpose. So I kind of capitalized on that. So Wait, the, then really the singer, quick, sorry, yeah. I just have to tell listeners who don't, who are not singers and musicians, transpose means that without changing the sheet music, in his head, he can change right. the key of any song. So if it's too high or too low, John can just change the entire key and accompany as and, if it's in that key. And sorry. it's important for me because like you and I have experienced, you know, sometimes you don't feel well, sometimes you don't have the notes, sometimes you have a cold. So as an accompanist, First, your goal is to assure the the singer's well-being. Yes. A, not just by playing the notes correctly at rehearsal, whatever, but like you really look after... The singer. The singer and ultimately what's going to make them feel good about their singing, transposition. Mm -hmm. um, what's going to make them look and sound the most beautiful under the worst circumstances. Correct, yeah. So Which we life have been on through. stage and off stage are different. So I will never bring to a stage, you know, like, I don't want people to worry about the singers. Yeah, So, yeah. like, I take the responsibility of putting in a little extra and being more sensitive to the breath. Yes, you actually have to watch the breath because in conversation, I can I can feel like if you're breathing up here, you're tense. But if you're like, ah, I just yeah. got home kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I can gauge how long I hold the note, yeah. how long, um, which I get 
a lot in trouble for because you're not supposed to do that, you know, in a scholastic sense. But my goals are different. Yeah, with... because it's about the audience and the singer and and the truth you're telling in that moment for wherever that those people are. And you I, forget yeah, about technique exactly, at that point. or the yeah, or what's written. I want to say that that is so. It's so refreshing to even hear have that this conversation about that as a performer because the freedom and the trust that I have when I sing with you is that I'm not thinking about what you're doing and worrying that it's not going to be how we rehearsed it or that it's not going to be in my best interest. Whereas sometimes I honestly would prefer a track to a live musician. And I hate saying that out loud because I know what it's going to be. No, but when you have never worked with a a pianist and then they're, they're like, Oh, we've got someone for you. And that just, that is like shooting in the dark. You know, whereas when it's you, I just know no matter what happens, you got my back because you're watching and listening and breathing. Even if you change a key in the middle of the song, (laughs) I will follow you. Exactly. I will follow you. (laughs) Remember, um, even back in the Octavia days, you know, Octavia Lounge days in San Francisco, I've always looked after how, how the singer will feel eventually about their performance. Yeah. Um, the audience is easy because they're pleased anyway, you know, yeah. f- for, you know, to have a singer or a pianist and they get to enjoy yeah. that. But ultimately, in our profession, what's more important to me is that the singer sounds, feels, and looks good on mm-hmm. stage. No Look tension. Good. And no, yeah. no like tension. Like reaching for that note. Um, yeah, when I see that happen, you know, I tend to breathe more with the singer and smile or, yeah. you know, j- just like a friend that you could, you know, that even if you make some mistakes, you know, you skip a, a measure or a verse. Yeah, you're like, oh, I will there. have to listen. <laughs> yeah. the, the advantage stuff of, of my mu- musical education yeah. is that, and also a lot of internal work as a person, you know, is yeah. to be empathic um to the needs of your singer yeah you know? and to not think about my own notes anymore yeah and that takes work I mean it, it's something that yes it comes naturally but like I tell some of my students you know it's constant work on the piano there's every, a discipline to it ev- yes every day and then you need to take it out there test it, Work it mm-hmm. out, and then when you get on stage, you're not so much on the sheet music, yeah, yeah, as you are to the singer, yeah, totally. You know, and it's true now that I'm doing opera, it's even more, yeah, sensitive and precise, you know, and you have to listen to, um, not only listen anyway, because like you feel the heart, yeah, yeah. Of the Do you feel like you are also that in touch with the, co- the 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 composer in a way too? Is it the composer and the singer, or is it okay? Without you know what getting I mean? woo woo <laughs> yeah, yeah, about totally. it, like for instance, um, every day I try to play the big pieces, you know, Bach, Beethoven, Chopin. You know, that's that's just part of my my routine. Yeah. Um, so. Sometimes I feel Bach has his hand on my shoulder without getting (laughs) woo-woo because I believe that Bach was the voice of God. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm gushing on Bach, but but that's that's okay. uh, John, sometimes when we'll go on these hikes and I'll ask him for like, we do old school cheese miss means gossip in Filipino, and he gives me the cheese miss on composers in the olden days. No, 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 no. I, I... Tell you music history yes. in gossip form. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and this person had an affair with this person. But all, the fact that you know all that stuff also probably informs you about what they might have been feeling as they composed that right. music. And and on to contemporary music. It's yeah. the same principle. Yes, you know? yes. Um, some pianist overplay. Yeah. Because they want to be noticed. Heavy. Yeah. The, the thing is, you have to disappear. And people should forget 
they should just be hearing sounds like orchestra or, you know, or yes. orchestra and voice, you know, like this show we did the other night. Oh, my God. Okay, so... Yeah. We, um, yeah. We're, we're, gonna, we're jumping we're, all over, but it's jumping, okay. Sorry. It's okay. That's, no, we, I like it. <laughs> That's how we are. So um, I didn't realize that it was just piano, and then we had saxophone for a couple of numbers. Yes. But because of the power of the singers, I felt like I came out of a symphony orchestra performance. Completely. Because like it was incredible singing. That hall was filled with like this angelic thing. It's oh like angels were flying out everywhere. It was. And and to just so tell the audience. What was the point of that? Well, we were just talking about, I mean, who knows? Oh, no, the composers. You were talking about the composers. Oh, and yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And, and that you were. But I just want to say that that show is a testament to your talent. So we had gospel singers, soul singers. We had, I mean, I oh sang Edith God. Piaf. We had uh, uh, Adriana Hicks is a Broadway star right now in Some yeah, Like It Hot. Maria. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. We have these prodigy kids. You should get her on the show. I would love to. Um, she played the cello and sang, but she also played... Oh, Kathleen, yeah. Oh, my God. That was... Uh, genius. Yeah, genius. genius. We had... Um, uh, um, oh, Tina Turner. <laughs> uh, Christina Love saying she's the OG Tina Turner. Wait, I mean, the reason she I'm She just named finished her West End Her West End run, debut yeah. run. And the reason I'm name dropping, so to speak, is oh, wait, because of that. Wait, let me pick up some names here. You yeah, drop know, right? some names. <laughs> No, but it's not but, that. Uh, it's can, just, can we get the vacuum cleaner? <laughs> to, it's more so that to say, though, that you played for... Every genre there was, and an opera singer, Ricardo, who we just interviewed for the pod, and um, he. It, it's to say that to to play opera, jazz, soul, Broadway in one show, um, it, and it is insane. And for this little town to have that caliber of talent is also insane. I don't see shows like that in the states. I mean, you just don't. It's it's. It's unique. I mean, it's so really- unique. I, I'm sure your audiences know like what we do in. Have you spoken to UNICEF about, people about? Um, no, not yet. This oh, okay. is our first UNICEF. So yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe in future episodes you should talk about what our charity work is about. Yeah, absolutely, and we've but done a lot. By not the way, the just, two of yeah, us. internationally, but like this particular group that we do twice a year in yeah. Germany, Austria, brings all these. Talents from, globally. I mean, like they're not necessarily big names, but big names in their in yes, their yes. domain. And sometimes, sometimes big. Names. I mean, like uh, yeah. Depends. I mean, we've got. I'm sorry, I forget. We have Adriana, who's like a Broadway star. Broadway star, you know, West End stars. You know, you've done the West End. Yeah, you know, like there's a a, a resume. For each you know, and every artist. For yeah, and they're fantastic. And why am I saying this again? <laughs> this <laughs> I is have how we do. Early no, signs. No, oh. no, you don't. No, we're saying oh. it because we're saying this is how this is what's special about. Oh, this, right, the, right, the right, shows. right, right. I enjoy tremendously those like genres. Like yeah. you transition from like gospel. To like opera, yeah, you yeah. know, and it takes um, almost an actor's work. I learned that from totally. you guys, you know. So you, you kind of imagine where you are in the scene. Yes, yes. Before you you start, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play for Ricardo, opera singer. My mind goes to. The Metropolitan Opera. How will it sound? You know, how yeah. will it sound on that stage? So, and then you've got rhythm and blues. You've got mm-hmm. the pop, which I love, by the way. It's important because I love all genres of music. So okay, so now that I mean, of course, I we're mean, I'm, around, I'm but blessed after to, you to have. What made you not go in the concert pianist track? Well. Because you could have, and you know that. I was still- asked before my sophomore year in college, mm-hmm. you know, when you're like yeah, 18, just, yeah, 19, yeah. Um, are you willing to do the work, meaning 8, 11 hours a day, and not socializing, living a reclusive life? 
et cetera, yeah. Um, and I said no. And it was a big decision, you know. And I'm glad I made that decision. Me because too. as a young person at the conservatory, we all aimed for that number one spot. Yeah. But that spot was already taken, like, even before... You all you, got there. Yeah. I mean, it's a really elite group mm-hmm. of, of top level... And, you know, they're already there. Yeah. And so there's I no said, space for variety. Serve, yeah. And there's no space for variety. They're part of a machine. Yes. Right? I mean, you got to play what your audience wants to hear or the management wants to hear, mm-hmm. etc. You mm-hmm. know, not that I'm bitter or anything. No, no. No, but I, what I love about my work right now is that, again, that flexibility of playing all these genres... And loving what you're playing. Yes. It's more important, you know. And I'm, I'm honest to singers sometimes. I'm like, oh, I don't like this song because A, B, C. It has to mean something. Yes. And the singer, pianist vibe should be there. You have to agree Yeah. on what feels good, what sounds good, what sounds right. Yes. So the secret to... Being a supporting artist like me, again, is to have all the information available to the singer. Yeah. That you can count on me to be there mm-hmm. regardless. Mm. One time. <laughs> Say it. Do we have time? Yeah, of course. We have all we the time. We were jet lagged. We were coming from Oh, you and me. Tour. Yeah. <laughs> from, from like an exhaustive tour. We were we sleeping on. We have been through on... so much, the two of us, and we'll get into that, but go on. Before yeah, lounge this is little... privileges, we were sleeping on our airport floors. Before lounge privileges, you first were of all, all, like covered in like we have. <laughs> let, let's just go through the cities. We've had Russia, Malaysia, We've had um, Kuala Lumpur, Moscow. Kuala, yeah, yeah, Kuala Lumpur, Moscow. We've had Paris. Paris. Oh yes, Paris. Oh, that's a whole. Uh, we even did a, a musical in Paris. That I mean, was so all good. over we, the United um, States, all right? over Carnegie Hall. The two of us. Oh my God! Hey, my shout gosh. out! Shout out to my bandmates. Yes. Oh my God! Yeah. Um, and we've done God Texas, um, Virginia, Virginia, St. Louis, St. Louis, New, New York. York. New Jersey, uh, Boston, Seattle, Florida. <laughs> oh, God. We've really we, gone there. I mean, got yeah. China. We forgot about Beijing. Beijing. Oh, my we're... God. So can you tell Beijing. this story? Oh, my God. Beijing. I mean, this just is Just quickly. Just yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we, after the gig. After the gig. We're first like, of we all, have lots of cash, right? Well, <laughs> it was their, their opening of their first five-star Hilton in Beijing. Yeah. And in we were the Wang part of the Fujing opening district. ceremonies, which mm. was a really big deal. And we were like, yeah, and, you know, fancy hotel. And they're like, oh, the pool's closed over here because on the top level because they didn't get permits for this and that. It was just like really, I don't even know. It was just sort of a really surreal experience Mm -hmm, being mm -hmm. there. And anyway, we're like the the guy after we did our our gig and everything and we sang the the bejesus out of everything. It was awesome. Then he's like, you need to get paid? I'm like, yes. I mean, I'm not going to do the accent because it, it is what it is. But I went, he took me down to a basement where there are all these workers in the bottom of this hotel. And he's just like, how much we say? I'm like, uh, uh, I don't remember. And I, that I was like looking it up. He just starts counting out cash in American dollars. And like, I'm like, here's the, oh, okay. here's the invoice. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And then me, so I go to John's room, and I'm like, they just gave me all this cash. All we're, this like, cash. we're like, we're just like, Whoa. we're rolling in the money. No, what I'm talking about, like, I know, went, I know. Okay, then, get there. Yeah. Tell, tell the so audience. Then they, like, then they so gave funny. us, they gave us this like uh, sure. Jack. Jack was our driver. The driver, yes. His name yeah. was Jack. I'm yeah. not sure what his Chinese name was, but his name for the day with us was, was Jack. Jack. And yeah. we wanted an authentic Chinese meal. Right. And we're like, okay, Jack, take us to a meal. What we didn't know, um, 
And at least this is our experience. So please, no one come after us. This is just our experience in China. Um, right. We didn't we know yeah. that the, the tourism over there is its own business and they are all connected. And Jack, Jack was going to take us to a restaurant where he'd get a kickback or whatever. Wait, was this before the cable car? No, before this is the cable car. Before ride. the cable car. Before yeah. Jack fell in love with us and felt guilty for swindling us a so little bit. So we wanted to see the Great Wall. Oh yeah, well yes, but we wanted that meal. It was the meal. Oh, the meal. Yeah. The meal okay. So is we were taken to the Olympic Village where they. Yes. They and had he goes, "This is the best meal." Da, da, da. And well, you know, things were so dirt cheap there. So we're like, "Let's order every dish and get a variety." It's just the two of us. They brought out. No, um, no, no. Wait. You said to the waiter. No, the waiter said, "You like some chicken?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah that'd be great." Chicken. Um, you want fish? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we rice, noodles. You know, like you know. I'm we're thinking, thinking we're thinking it's a hundred dollar meal because no, 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 a dollar no, no. Like, goes like far. a typical. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just know, little bits and bobs. <sighs> it arrives. It's a feast for thirty people. people. It was like a spread, and we're like. <laughs> we didn't know how to send anything back. And, and we were like, ask Jack I, to eat with you us. You know, I hate seeing food in oh massive amounts. Oh, my God. Amounts, it know? was like, a fish. The so full that fish. Was a, I had a meltdown. You did. But we could We were laughing too hard. Thank God for humor yes, that for time. Yes, for humor. We then were we, crying. So we were like we the bill... <laughs> Sorry, okay. But we'll go back to the subject. But it's a funny story. The bill came. came. It was and like we're trying to like do the Yeah, we're trying to do the, the math. The math. And we're not math people. <laughs> we're artists. I'm like, well if so you here, divide and carry the one, yeah, is that this the wait, sad. if you wait, if we calculate is it fifty dollars? And he's like no, I think that's... No, 500. 500. I mean, no, 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 no. no, no. It's impossible. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Did you see all that food? Yeah, that's I'm like, no. And I was right. And you I were was right, right in the end. It was the... All our money went to that meal. <laughs> we were like... We were still in the taxi going... Or in Jack's car going... Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. We like, did it wrong. We, we did, did it, it wrong. wrong. No, 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 no. No, wait, wait. Let me count the money I have left over. We kept calculating, calculating. That was an expensive day because that like... That was. Uh, yeah, the Great went. Wall, which was a great experience. You gotta go and oh, that see was the Great really Wall. Great. I still have photos. <laughs> we ended... Yeah, I still have photos of us like... like <laughs> Okay, back to the sorry, subject. Sorry, sorry. sorry, but it was just so funny because in the end, all no, that so cash the went point, to the Chinese meal. The point is, before we, we got cities. derailed, um, many cities, m- cities in the Philippines are. We have charity work. Also oh yes, in lots the of charity work. We've done. Um, we've done our time. I mean, we have, and and that's one thing I want um, young people, especially who listen to this, to understand. And it's something that you said that also. Ricardo said in our interview, and it's a through line, and the youth, to all the youth and people who are working hard for careers in Mm -hmm. in any industry, Mm -hmm. you see people, because we have such an instant noodles society of social media, you think that people just made it in any business, in any artistic endeavor, like that that John just can play that way because he's so naturally talented. Yes, that's true. But the discipline and the it's journey, every day. it is doing all those gigs in our youth, all those gigs. They were I, I painful. I don't think physically I can do that what we now. Did. I can't. I can't. I'm, I can't. Yeah, I feel we did it like with no sleep. We woke up at four in the morning to, to catch get flights. to catch flights. Yeah, we were sleeping oh, wait, in people's remember. houses. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I no. Say we it. were coming from Malaysia. Yeah. I don't know. Wait, oh, yeah, from between, Moscow. From Moscow. From right? Moscow, and then we had to touch down in, in Los, Angeles. Los Angeles, and then go straight to Malaysia. And I left my car in Los Angeles. Went back to Ted's house. Our producer then. Um, oh my God! Just enough time for me to go to Chino Hills, <laughs> <laughs> to go to my cousins in Chino Hills to say hello, and really just to change clothes. Yeah, and so get, I go back, get your summer clothes I go back from the to winter get clothes. You, yes, and I said, "Excuse me, just one second. No, Ted's like, "Get in the car. We're going to be late for the flight." And this is after a whole fiasco, by the way. That the Russian, the airline. Russian. Oh, we'll get into the, the tears. Oh my God! Oh God! That was a whole thing. We'll we'll get into it, but. 
or we might not on we this might podcast. Not. No, we'll no, no, we, we only have a little We'll do a time. memories one. Yeah. Um, but he's like, wait, 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 you guys, you guys, you guys, hold on one second. He's like, uh, hold on. And we were, and he goes, okay, I'll stop the car. He stops the car. And John's like, one second, opens the door. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he threw up. And he's like, okay, I'm good. Wipe myself <laughs> over, like, let's go. The show must go on. We have a flight to catch. <laughs> Okay, so let's we get go back. To <laughs> we, we go, go to, to Malaysia. Oh my god, that was so! It was like going from extreme cold, cold to extreme tropical hot. climate. Yeah, we. I mean, that was already our second trip to Malaysia. Yeah, I think but that was we when muscled we muscled through. We, that. we muscled through it all, and like you said, I don't think I could do it now. But those that was that was our learning curve. That was what you have to do. You know, that's the work. That's that, the work, yeah. and I'm so grateful for that work. Um, you know, and 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 honestly, how this whole UNICEF thing came to be, and this is again another message for our youth is: I got this gig to come to UNICEF Germany. They had never really brought in anyone from the states, actually from the states, not like. Um, somebody living in Germany already. Yeah, the Euro-Americans, yeah. They usually would just get somebody who's living here and then put them in the show, right. for example. Mm-hmm. That was sort of the beginning of them bringing people over, or I was the beginning of that, let's just say. And I told John about the gig, and he wasn't in the roster to do the gig, but I'm like, please, just play it for me. make me feel more... I was like, it'll make me feel comfortable, but also I know if they hear us... It'll be us. I just knew it in my soul. But what? what we didn't know is they're already like Yeah, there was organized. already a pianist. Yeah, there was, there was like, already everything, but yeah. I wanted my people. Yeah. And I knew that as long as we didn't ask for anything extra, he, mm-hmm. he paid his own hotel. Absolutely. He didn't he didn't get paid for the gig. But in seconds, Harry Burt fell in love with us. That's magic. <laughs> and uh, he understood in a very short amount of time that he recognized in you that you were versatile in just that short amount of time. And the next year, even just hearing you do that one part, just Cologne, not even Hilden. Right. Um, he's like, bring your friend back uh, from uh, from Paris. Actually, the first time it was you represented the Philippines and I was America. The second time we came back, you represented France and I was from the Philippines. Do you remember? We, it's like we you have felt sashes. like imposters. Yeah, we're like... <laughs> You were found out because he didn't speak Tagalog, you remember? Yes. You're like, I'm from the Philippines. You I know. know. We, we were so representing I had to whatever cover we you so much. Oh, my anyway, God. That, so that's we, we're yeah, digress. So, okay. But I, okay. So the point being the discipline. The discipline and being ready at any moment to to represent something and to get the oh, gig. Honey, you got to be quick. Yeah, and now we, here we are 13 years later mm-hmm. because of that one moment of saying, hey, John, will you take a chance? And we've had many let's just take a chance moments. They, they don't me. all work. No, they yeah. don't. <laughs> they <laughs> Let don't. me tell you. They don't, no, not. honey. <laughs> but, but it's the point, I mean, and I, I'm curious, and I want to ask you, sure. if you had advice to um, our younger listeners, or people, not even younger listeners, just people in the industry. Oh, in the What industry. is the advice okay. about that kind of thing? About just mm, the trajectory of a career. So Never give up. Really? Never give up. If you feel this burning desire in your soul to continue in your trajectory of being an artist, like in my case, music saved my life many times. Mm. You know, and I'm lucky that, you know, I stayed on this trajectory, however hard it was physically, emotionally, you get rejected. Um, do not give up. Yeah. Who's, who was it that said, you're only one job away from getting what you want? At all times. At all times. Yeah. Because you never know who's out there, who's going to get touched by your performance, your, you know, the thing that we do. Um, there's no point in giving up, really. You know, it's like it's you, you only are. have to go forward. Yeah, you take the failures, you take the rejection. But keep working. Mm-hmm. Keep working at it. The work is lifetime anyway. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be playing piano till 
mm-hmm. till the fingers can. You yeah. know, some singers s- sing in their nineties still. Yeah, you know, so never give up on your dreams and be strong. Yeah, and disciplined. Know who you are. Yeah, and don't let people decide what's what's good for you or dictate your decisions artistically or in life. Yeah. Um, is that to find your own person. Mm-hmm. Not, I mean, and it's a lot of work, you know, a lot of internal psychological work. You know, if you need psychotherapy or you need someone... Yeah, take care of the inside. Of the inside. You know, and then we take care of the outside. Then we go shopping. Yes, exactly. How much fun am I to go oh shopping? Oh my God, with? he's the best. Okay, go so yeah, that was you the and answer. Tobin. Woo. Yeah, but I know, right? It's so true. You're enablers. You are like enabler of my shopping. Are, anyway, but, so Bref, that's um, that's what I want to say to the younger generation. If you have this burning in your in your stomach, in your belly, you have the yes. fire in your belly. Do not give up. Keep working, and. To live also. Yes. You know, I'm. we're lucky, you know, in lucky. this business that we get to do both. Yeah. The hard work. And then we go out, have a good meal. Mm-hmm. We have conversations. And then the cycle repeats. And then the next city. Yeah. Oh, B. Okay, wait. Travel light. Oh, <laughs> travel light. That's, so, that's good advice. That's Travel very good light. Um, yeah. As a, a, a touring musician, um, you learn how to travel light because you're slapping all the time. Yeah. Have you learned that lesson? Uh, yeah. Mm. I mean, you know, once you start, dude, I, it's you, hard because I like my outfits and I love my fashion. Your shoes. In my yeah. shoes, but I will. I also want to say, um, with all of Persevere. that, perseverance is so important, and and also just you know because. Our podcast is all about, you know, being a global citizen and what that means. And not everyone who's listening is a musician or an artist. Mm -hmm. But I feel like everything that you're saying is also true for our our grander audience. And the fact that you come from the Philippines, but you lived in the States and now you live in France Mm -hmm. and... That you and and now you're starting this um, company, this opera company with yeah. Ricardo. You should, yeah, with Ricardo Tamora. Ricardo Tamora. I would love so this. Um, but he is starting Italy. this in in Toronto, Tr- Italy. Taranto. No, Toronto. Taranto. Taranto, Italy. No, Taranto. Taranto. Good. Sorry, <laughs> uh, Italy. Um, but that's what I mean. You're going where the doors are open, and you're right. reinventing um, different. If parts. this door is closed. Try the next door. It might be open. Yeah. Often it's open. Yes. Okay. We don't know what's behind it. Yeah. But often, you know, you go in there and you find like it's Narnia. In there, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, and I think the other thing I love about you, John, it, very similarly to me, is you have such a natural curiosity about people and life that it gets you. It, it keeps you open to the moment of what, oh, what's, who's that? Oh, what's this? And it keeps you open to these conversations Listen, with people from all me, walks of life. It's keep, it keeps me from doing this. Yes. Right? I, I've got a story. I have to say this story. We were in Russia at this hotel and I turned the corner and John's talking to the guy who's taking our Having luggage upstairs. And, over and he's emails. like, yeah. And he goes, well, wait a minute. He goes, we're exchanging numbers. And this young guy, he wants to come to San Francisco. I'm like, oh, he should. Next thing I know, John's like, um, he might want to stay with me in San Francisco and he might need a visa. And I'm like, John, 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 you're giving too much. <laughs> I'm like, I was young. You were, no, but what I mean is you were so curious about this guy carrying your luggage. Like you I mean, were even so, here, I'm curious. You, about I'm just curious about people. Yeah. I mean, and the next what, thing I know, he knows this guy's dream is to swim to Alcatraz from San Francisco, and 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 we and both many more, and, and we, many and more, and we both have that. We yeah. both have just met. I'm like, okay, let's go to the bakery and visit this person, and I brought a gift for this person, and we and I love that we have that in common because it makes us great travel buddies. Because I like to also meet a lot of people, even though technically we're both introverts. I know this to be right. true. But we are very extroverted in a certain well, that's way. That's actually typical of... It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. One so, time you could be like, 
you know, like a, uh, a, a, a mouse on crack. Yes. And then, like, Greta Garbo. It, it, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I want, there's, so we have some questions that I ask every person that I interview, and mm-hmm. we're about to get to them. Um, oof. And I'm, I'm going to go there because I, I do have time. So um, before we get to those questions, right. um, I, and this is one, so in life and as an artist and, or as a being on this earth, a citizen of the earth and the globe, um, there are a few things that all human beings have to go through in life. And it's, um, li- you know, it's being born, mm-hmm. um, it's ex- it's pain, it's joy, all these things that just connect us as human beings. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I want to talk about the word legacy because, uh, you know, recently um, we have lost a lot of people in our lives, you know, and having this long relationship, you and I, of mm-hmm. what, is it almost 20 years? Yeah which is crazy. Um, and we've gone, we've lost friends. We lost Eric Reed. My I didn't, parents. Yes, your parents. And I want to talk about that because not everyone gets to be a star, you know, and by star, I mean, not everyone gets to be Sean, Madonna or, yeah. or Barbara Mariah, Streisand yeah. or famous concert pianist, fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. Um, you join. Yeah. And Why I, does she dress like that? <laughs> I don't Anyways, know. Sorry. But I, you know, and you recently at last, your mom and may her soul rest in peace. And she was a strong, incredible human. And I was thinking about this today when I knew that we were going to do this sit down. Mm. And it's so weird to interview a really dear friend because I know so much about Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about that and thinking about the simplicity of my mother and who's still here and your your mom Mm -hmm. who's moved on and that they were just hard, they are just hard working beautiful souls on that mm-hmm. have graced this earth mm-hmm. and that we get to be on a stage and we get to do all this stuff and i was thinking about that word legacy and that you know you are your mother's legacy mm-hmm. um, but what do you, what does that word mean to you when you think of yourself or her or you know what has grief taught you in this time because i think this is such a poignant thing for our audience. Everyone in this world can relate to this. And Mm -hmm. I know you have a deep wisdom there. I had an extraordinary relationship with mom. Like, I felt like we lived our best lives together um, in the Philippines to the States. And then when I moved to Paris, you know, we... I assured her her happiness. I mean, I, 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 okay, after college, I went through a really tough, rough time with drugs in New York City. Um, so I was working at a downtown theater, you know, doing great job. You know, we were, we were opening soon. And, you know, as a young person, you know, you go through stuff. So that turned out to be... Um, a five-year period of heavy drug use in New yeah, York. I mean, you that's know, that's honest. Yeah, you know, I have no shame about it. No, you know, it's something that I had to go through. Well, look at you now. Yeah, so it's. But then, um, legacy is for me. It's funny because the other night I was looking at my mom's photo, and there's the date of birth. You know, November 13, 1947 to November second, two thousand twenty-two. And those two days have a dash. So that dash is the legacy. Are you verklempt? I I'm am. Sorry. I'm verklempt. No, I'm verklempt because one of uh, Eric Reed's very best friends, Jaquel, said he's the dash. He's oh, not the date. She said that. So I just got chills. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Me too. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, the that's the legacy. It's like, what happened? And the special thing about mom, you know, I, uh, is that in that dash, I was in there a lot. 
And I wa- like I told you, I, when I see pictures of my mom, they, they actually talk because you remember in your heart <laughs> yeah. the conversations yes. before and after the photos. Yes. Um, you know, I, and in a way, yeah, I still hear her voice and I will hear her voice forever. It's in your heart. It's in your mind. It's in yeah. your DNA. Yeah. So what is the legacy is you take everything that you've learned from your parents your ancestors your you know your elders take the best parts get rid of the the, the, the shaky bad, stuff the yeah sh- the shaky stuff and run with it that's legacy that's how you will create and we'll no, never know anyway our real legacy until we're past right that's, that's it like we exactly. passed on so Every day is work to, um, it, it, it is work to establish that legacy. Yes. You know, in, in our case, is how to make people happy, um, bringing art to different parts of the world, like, you know, a small town like Philosophos, but how cute is it here? I love it here. Yeah, but the point is, <laughs> um, you cannot just stay in the practice room. Yeah. You cannot be a prophet in your own land. Oh, God, you that's You have powerful. to go out there and, and spread the word of love and truth and frustration, sadness, oh. you know, everything, everything that art encompasses. That's legacy for me, is that if you put your heart in something, you'll be remembered as such, as a loving person. Yeah. That's legacy. And that's all in that little dash. And that's all in that little dash. Ah, Hercules, I love Hercules, it. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. So, no, but, yeah, you put me in this, like, this, no, this state of mom. Yeah, yeah. You know, knowing how close, you know how close we were. I so mean, on the phone, like, like she's my best girlfriend. Yeah, chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. Yeah. I swear to you, you know, yeah, you've seen I it, know. You know. So when she left, I was like, "Who do I talk to now?" Me. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, and no then, for real, I get it. Then, I get it. You know, God fills in. Yes. Those voids. Yes. You know, like I told you the other, the other day, I was out there just looking at the mountain. I swear, stuff. I heard my mom's. I, I don't know. It was raining, and I thought of a rain song in yeah. Filipino. Yeah. And I heard my mom's voice, oh. and then the tears, of course, start yeah. flowing. And I'm like, I could hear your voice, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Are you here? You know, and of course she's here in my heart. Yeah. You know, but then, it's it's so wonderful. She had an amazing dash. Yes. You know, and I got to be a part of that dash. It was so, you know, like, yes, dates, dates, yes. dates. The dash, dash. is this more. Yeah. Because it's so short. It's so short. I mean, our, we're just like guaranteed There's like nano information nothing. in every... Every you know, little yeah. little part of that, of that dash. dash. So that is so beautiful, does, John. Does that it answer makes me, your yes, question? Yes, it does. And that, Sorry, we got all like... Whoa, I know, we got it. We but got we're going to segue like, into our citizen sister questions now. Okay. And, and special treat as we're going to have a little bit of music. I don't know if it'll make it onto the pod, but it'll definitely make it onto the YouTube channel. So... But let's let's ask the question. So first question is, what's your favorite place to live in the world? <laughs> um, okay. And you don't, it, it's a fire round, so you don't have to. I really love Paris. Yeah. I mean, I've been in Paris for 15 years. Wow. Can you God, imagine? I can't. When, oh, when did so we crazy. leave Paris? The God, first show in Paris. I think. At least and then 18 before years. we brought the show, the 17 years ago, then because it was like oh, two years before. Okay, so or yeah, so Paris, yeah. because of the vibrant art scene, yeah, like I can walk to see the Mona Lisa if I want to see a, a Dega painting yeah. or Modigliani, yeah, you can, you know, I can, okay, um, yeah, so so Paris, Paris, okay, however, it's so expensive, I know, but that's your heart's place place is Paris. But it's, yeah, when I'm there, it's like, I've got everything I need here. I've got and my you piano. love it. But then again, yeah, favorite place. What is home for you? Yeah. Let, me, I, let yeah. me, yeah, let yeah, me yeah. turn the tables. Yeah. For me, 
because we have, we have many. I'm at yeah, home. Yeah, you're home everywhere. Yeah. I'm at home but everywhere. Live, and then I live. realized that home is just a concept in your mind. Yeah. That home is actually a person. Yeah. Like my partner, Fred, we've been together for 15 years. Oh, I love Fred. We can be in Iriga City, Camarines Sur, Philippines, and but, we can make a home. Yeah. Yeah. It's home. You're with your home. You travel with yeah, your yeah, home. Yeah. I mean, that comes from be- being a global citizen, if you will. Yeah. Um, and plus, Fred was a former flight attendant. So for him, this is also normal. Yes, yes. And it's you are to home not now. have a home. Okay, home base being Paris, right? Yes, yes. And now my business in Italy. And Fred has a country is. home. Yes. Um, and my little home in the Philippines. Yes. You know, so, so home is where... So you, home is a person... But, but not home... But to live your favorite place is Paris. Paris. Okay. So fire around, fire New around. York, so. well, yeah, New, York, <laughs> New York was like too much. Yeah. Los I, Angeles yeah, yeah. was too much Oof. traffic. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, we're good. Voila. We're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. So uh, favorite food... How are you doing on time? No, we're good. Yeah. We're good. Favorite food? Filipino. All, just any Filipino any food. Filipino. Any dish specific that you're like... Outside of adobo, yeah, laing. Oh, I love laing is a dish with taro leaves. Incidentally, the, from our region, my yeah, my my mom's from Beagle also, mm-hmm. and so that's where John's family's from as well. Naga, we're uh, uh, like no, we're Naga, the where only region. Um, Beagle region. Okay, if you look at the map, is the southern tip of the main island. Um, that's the only region where you eat. Spicy. spicy food with yeah, coconut people, milk. Yeah. People think that Filipino food is, is spicy. It's not. It's not at all. It's only beagle. Right? So now we have the gene. Oh my God, we eat like hot. hot we do. Hot, hot we were, I was sweating last I night. I love that powder. I know the powder and the. I know. Can oh, we score so good. some of that? I, I think we need to. Pa- by powder, we mean pepper. Yeah, just pepper. to be clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, like I, we we love hot food. What? Why are we talking about? Because hot food? because I asked you what well, your favorite, favorite food. Yeah, okay, okay, so, so yeah. go Speed on. Round. So okay, and um, now this I don't know why this stops people up, but what is an extraordinary thing that you find ordinary? Um, traveling. That's true. It's traveling, just a normal business. thing, and yeah, yes, yes. I forget sometimes how blessed we are when I'm like flying from, yeah. let's say, Paris to San Francisco, and I'm like champagne out. I can't drink anymore, <laughs> but like, like you know, like yeah, yeah. you're like this. Oh, see you in San Francisco, yep, you know. Yep, yep. Um, okay, it's, traveling it's is ordinary perfect, for me yeah, because, because you I mean, do it so much, so much, and yet yeah. you hear on like but I was it's just a big yeah. deal for certain. It people. is no, I just listened to a podcast in this morning. Brooklyn who's, and, We've never been to the city. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. Mean, yeah, so yeah, to answer traveling. your question. <laughs> traveling. Okay, what is an um, ordinary thing that you find extraordinary? Oh my God, this is a Sondheim song. Right? What's hard is simple. What's, What's simple natural. Is, yeah. yeah, just something different. like so. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, think. I mean, uh, do you want an example of what? Oh, no, no. Okay, you know. I what's love John? Extra. What's, what's something ordinary? ordinary that you find so extraordinary? Excel sheets. There you go. Yes. I, I mean, I so admire people who can do Excel I sheets. Can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. How do you change the dates? <laughs> yeah. And, like, oh my god. The, the I people can't. are like, I put can't. that in Excel. I'm That's like, so Yuki. You know. <laughs> That's Yuki's wife, Yuki. Hey. Hey. <laughs> yeah, but like you know, like. Things that are mundane, I find extraordinary. Which yeah, they, anyone can whistle any yeah. old day, and yet they think that you playing the piano is extraordinary. You're like, but that spreadsheet. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, or or fast typing or yeah. two handed. Yeah, yeah. Texting. You are two hander. I'm a two hander. Yeah, I'm old school. I'm like, eh. <laughs> you're you know? the but like I find those mundane things extraordinary. Because, you know, like, yeah, it's almost like an idiot savant. Like, yeah, you yeah. don't know. What you don't know. Yeah, like gardening. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, totally. Gardening is, like, extraordinary to me. You're eating fruits off your garden, yeah. but I don't know how. Yeah, totally. It was extraordinary to me to have a kitchen. Or, or to have a closet where I, all my things just live there right. for permanent. Right, I'm like, right. oh. Or a butcher's block. Yeah. 
Or like, do you, like when you came to visit me on Bainbridge, wasn't it weird to see me living like that? Like, like when you I know, you're all like flowing down, you know. But again, you Kitchen know, that's home. extraordinary. Totally, that, totally. That is natural to you. To others, I remember yeah. when but, I visited yeah. you at Annie Carmona's. Oh and, my and God. And you, your back, her backyard had the... The, the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Tower. Yeah. And she walks full on makeup, the hair, the flowing dress. Hi. You know, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so that's extraordinary that we find ordinary. Yeah. Okay. You know, and we're so blessed we're to have so that. We're so blessed to have those experiences. Okay, last question. Yes. And my favorite one. What makes somebody a citizen of the world? Streetwise. You gotta be streetwise. Wow. Because you can be in Mumbai or New York. If you're not streetwise, you can't be a citizen of the world. Wow. That's the first time I've heard you don't that. Wanna, you don't want people taking advantage of you on the road. you got to learn But you also how. have to be with the people. I've made my mistakes. Yes, China included. I said, don't look at their eyes just keep walking. Yeah, because walking. they no kept trying to contact. push us to buy stuff and we you were know, like and so You know they price it so high. Yeah, yeah. But so street, <laughs> mo- street smarts. Street smarts. Street smarts. Know, your, know where your wallet is. Yes. Um, do not leave valu- valuables in your hotel room or your gym locker. Yeah. I but lost. also be able to be bro down with the people. To bro people. down with the actual people yeah. and not just stay in your hotel. Oh my God, Yes. Melissa, there, there's some. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa is that true? She likes to stay in her hotel room. It's true. Yeah, but there, if there's a mountain, this beautiful. Climb you the mountain. Climb. Climb the mount. <laughs> Climb yeah. that mountain. Yeah. And at the end, you know, at the top, yeah. you will see the view. Don't from yes. the top. Citizen sister listeners, this Yo, is the extraordinary John Ferencio. We're going to go to the piano. I love your show. Thank you. Oh we my God, love I, you. So the, anyway, yeah. You're going to have fans from this. I'm going to tell you right now, and especially when they hear you play, we're going to do a little what something at the play? piano. I Well, it'll be a surprise. Okay. It's coming up. But thank you. Oh, thank you. Cece. I mean, yeah. Cece. And okay. we're like, look at us. We're in our cash. Like, no, no I makeup, mean, I nothing. actually put this on for the show, Aww. but I'm going up the mountain with the doggy. Oh, yay. Are we? Yeah, let's oh, do yeah. that. Yeah, okay, we have so time. after music. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for watching and listening. And now, friends, to finish this wonderful episode where we celebrated the extraordinary John Florencio. I know you've been waiting for it, so here it is. My friend John doing what he does best, playing beautiful music. One of my favorite Rachmaninoff pieces. And just as an added bonus, some fun of me and John just hanging out by the piano, doing what we do, being silly and singing and enjoying each other's company with music. We hope you've enjoyed this. Oh, and just shout it again, it's Filipino American History Month. And so John and I added a little um, Filipino music at the very end there. We hope you enjoy. Shout out to our mothers who are from the region of Beagle. We love that. And again, thank you for making Citizen Sister the number one podcast on Bay Ridge Island. Thank you so much, you guys. Enjoy.
do a little bit of music for the pod. Just something fun. Um, so we haven't done this for years. Who wrote this? Tell me. This is Kenny Vega from... Kenny Vega from... From San Francisco. Now he lives in New York, but it's a very good friend of my good friend Graham. Yeah. Graham hey, Graham. Um, and we'll just do a little bit. this is from... Uh, 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 Musical. Musical called Cafe Depresso. <laughs> I yeah, love it. Yeah, Cafe okay. Depresso. And this is called uh, How Sweet is the Wine. How Sweet is the Wine, yeah. So here we go. I hope I remember. I We're just it's doing been a tidbit. Long time. How sweet is the wine that has never been tasted? How bright is the moon when the moon? Is new. How precious is time that should never be wasted. Whatever it's worth, there's nothing on earth that I could ever treasure more than you. You are the sun, you are the rain in spring, you are the only thing makes my heart start to sing. You make my mornings bright and my nights divine. Whatever it's worth, there's nothing on earth that I could ever treasure more than you. Thank you for yeah, that little should, tidbit. Yeah. Do you still have this music Somewhere. I, I, I do. Have, I, I do. Music. Oh, wait. Let's just do a little bit. Shout out to our moms. Uh, what? Brrrrum. Nago sa go bangun si sa ko yung mata ibinuglat. Kay tong kay diklamano ko nang alag-alag. Kaso ihiling ko si sa ko yung mata bali. Tas. Si mong lawag. Hiling ko maliwanag Sa rumbanggi Sa higdaan Nakadangog ako Inunining sa rungganggang Sa duhubak ko Katurugan Katurugan Magukundi si mong boses Iyong alam And then there's another, wait, there's okay. another verse. Uh, Dago sa ko bang mong sisa ko yung mata ibinuklat Kahit ang kadiklaman ako nangalag ka lang Kaso ihiling ko sisa ko yung mata mo I'm Stephanie Reese. Thank you so much for listening to Citizen Sister. Find us on our website, citizensisterpodcast.com and on Instagram at citizen.sister. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. It helps people find the show. Thank you so much.